everyone, this is Lisa from Canine Clips, and this is Sam, and Sam is a multi poo. And today we're going to be grooming uh, the full body on him with a three quarter inch blade. So his owner likes to keep him longer, and uh, that's what we're going to do with him today. And he does come in quite regularly, so that's how you're able to use the longer blade. So he generally doesn't have any mats for me, and uh. That is how we're going to be able to do that. So uh, as with my grooming, I like to start with the face and feet and nails and ears and comb out the tail. So we're going to do that uh, before we give him a bath here. So. so they've been coming quite regularly. There's actually three of them that come. And I am doing videos on all of them. And then I'm also going to do a video on how different multi poos can look. So uh, Maltese crossed with a poodle. So they can be very uh, different sizes and uh, different characteristics of their fur, all depending on what parent they take on. All right, so we're still gonna keep the face a bit longer because we're keeping the body longer too. So I can always come back and trim it a little bit shorter after to match up but at the onset i'm just more concerned about getting the hair around the eyes out all right haven't already I'd appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel and I have lots of videos that I post um, every day and I also have lots of videos that I've already done on the various dogs and breeds that I've groomed so there's quite a bit to choose from if you're looking for something specific um, or a breed specific cut I'm trying to add that as fast as I can, but if there's something specific you'd like to see as well, just please comment, and I will put that um, up as soon as I'm able to do so. This is my full-time business. I do work out of my house, and I've been doing it for just about 16 years now. It's actually 16 years this month, so pretty excited about that and still very much enjoying what I do. My uh, dog clients always wonder how their dog does when I'm grooming them. And I always say, oh, they're doing good or they're just a little bit nervous or fidgety or whatever the case may be. Um, so that's one of the main reasons I actually started the YouTube channel so that I can show um, the owners how well their dogs do act and that, you know, Although stressful, um, their dogs are okay. All right, so I'm just gonna pluck out that ear while I'm over here. So you can see it's a little bit red, a little bit deeper pink. Um, and once I pluck all that hair out, that will assist in that. Because um, the, the wax has something to stick to, which makes the hair a little bit heavier. And that's what causes the irritation for the dog. Makes it quite itchy. So once I get all this out, that should alleviate that. And it does come out quite easily. As you can see. Let's tilt it down a little for you. bit of hair in there that's quite long so when the wax sticks to the hair it makes it heavy so then the hair grows downward into the ear canal so 
All right, so there's his ear, hair, all plucked out. So that should feel a lot better. And then once I'm done giving him a bath, I'll actually put an ear solution in there as well. And I do that after the bath because it helps to dry out the ear as well. So just in case any water happened to get in there, that's why I put it in after the bath. It'll just help dry up any of that wax that's in there as well. So when they shake their head, that will come out. Oop. Okay, bud. All right. I'm going to do the other ear. one also has quite a bit of hair in it. And same kind of coloring, a little bit red. A little bit darker of a pink, I guess, so it's not really red. So still very healthy. And once this hair is gone, it should alleviate that. So there's this hair. All right. So that's all done. Since the ears are longer, too, I'm going to comb them out. Just a lot easier to do now than when uh, they're wet. There's no matting in them. A little bit, but not really. Just normal. When you're combing out any dog. And so I'm just going to give them a little bit of a trim. At this stage. They like to have the straight cut ears. As you can see. And then um, after the bath, I will even them out a little bit more. We'll just kind of see how after the bath and comb out, what's, uh, if there's any strays at that time. All right, so now I'm going to move on to the feet. we got a little bit of hair in there, but there's no matting or anything. Like I said, the... Uh, these guys come quite regularly, so there's three of them. So not too much matting. The owner likes to keep them longer, so um, they do have to come in more regularly for that. So because we're keeping him longer, um, I'm making sure that I, you know, stay close between the pads. That I'm not going way up in between the nails, because then otherwise this would become very short. So um, we don't want to do that. We just kind of round that out, but keep it longer um, because the all this fur up here is going to be long as well. So we don't want really short feet because that would stand out. All right, we're just going to do the nails on here. You can see he's pretty relaxed. We'll see if that continues.
And as you can see with all my grooming, I don't use any restraints. I just kind of maneuver with the dogs, whatever is comfortable for them. And their comfort level. I've worked with quite an array of dogs over the years and just uh, kind of gotten better with my techniques on how to hold them and just how to read them, of course. But still, after 16 years, it's still one of the best decisions I made. I love doing it. I love working with these guys. Always a good day when you can work with dogs. And get paid to do it too. That's always a bonus. This one's worn down a little bit, so he might have been chewing on that one. Might have been sore. I'm going to put a little styptic powder on it. Oops, wrong one. Just to make sure. You just hold that in there and push it down, just making sure it sticks onto the nail. And that'll clot up, clot up everything. All right, so we're done one half of his feet. We'll start on the second half. He's a pretty relaxed guy. Also, if you have any suggestions on what um, you'd like differently done, please let me know. I've had one comment that I talk too much or, um, you know, just anything like that. So if there's any suggestions to make my videos more appealing to you, I'd appreciate that. I always like to try to explain what I'm doing when I'm doing it. But maybe there's... Uh, something different you'd prefer, so please let me know. I'm always open to hearing what you have to say. I'm pretty good at getting back to everyone. I do respond to all the comments and or questions. more to go. He's being really good. And uh, next I'll just comb out the tail. Okay, final one.
usually if uh, the dog gets frequent walks as well too, the back feet or nails won't need as much of a trim as the front ones. It's not uncommon, as you can see, for nails to bleed. It's not a big concern. That just helps the quick to reseed. So you just got to make sure you have some styptic powder on hand for that situation. I just want to make sure it clots really good before I move on to the next stage. Sometimes when you bath them, it can start bleeding again, so I just keep an eye on it. There we go. Alright, so now we are going to comb out that tail. Nice big fluffy tail. And again, not really any matting. Just a little bit in there, but that's probably because it's nice and long. Not necessarily mats, but just just the thickness of it. And so there we go. Just take a little bit. Oops. And I just give that a trim as well. But we still want to keep that length because the whole body is going to be a little bit longer as well. Oh, it looks like there might be a nail on the front paw bleeding as well. Yeah. Let's put some stiptic powder on that one. Oh, turn it down. Like I said, it's not uncommon for the nails to bleed. Even with regularly groomed dogs, sometimes they're quick. It just grows a little faster, so just prone to bleeding. But it's always a good idea to get those nails regularly done. Otherwise, if they get too long, it causes some discomfort for the dog when they're walking. And you'll notice that they'll start to... Um, licking or chewing on their feet because they want to alleviate that themselves all right so we're going to take him here and move him to the tub area so i do have a nice raised tub and um and i guess i need some more shampoo mix so i just use heinz ketchup bottles that I've had for, or I guess, yeah, I think they're mustard, they used to be mustard bottles. And then I put in a, a concentrated shampoo that I've used um, for many years. It's probably 12 years already that I use the same shampoo. So it's highly concentrated. It says it's at a ratio of 50 to 1. But all I do is I put a pump in there and then I add the rest of water. And for the lids, I actually uh, have the ketchup bottle lids so that I don't have to worry about when I tip the bottle over that it spills out right away. It only spills out if I squeeze the bottle. And my uh, shower head here is attached to a nice flexible hose. Then I have the temperature set on my uh, on my gauge here so that when I turn on the water I just turn it all the way up and then it's already preset so I never have to worry about the water being too hot or too cold for the dogs it's just set to the good temperature so I don't have to worry about trying to fuss with the temperature all right so now we'll get the boy back bathing it's always good to remember to try to keep that um, 
water out of the dog's ears. So when I am watering their heads, I'm making sure it goes on top of the ears and not into the ear canal, if at all possible. So sometimes they're going to shake and, uh, you know, water may go in there, but that's why I use the solution at the end. So, but, you know, if you can at all avoid it, that's what you should be doing. Give them a good lather. A clean puppy, so we'll rinse all that dirt away. thing also that I use in my drain is one of those sink stoppers to catch all the hair and debris that may go in there because I don't of course want that to go into my pipes. So it keeps them nice and clear because otherwise there would be a lot of dog hair going into that. You know, so it's just nice to catch it as it comes out of this dog. Just with a trim obviously. There's going to be some stuff that goes down the drain too. I like to kind of wring off anything I can. Okay, there we go. Let him get his final shake in. I'm going to put on my earmuffs because I'll be blow drying here pretty soon after I towel dry him off. A little loud in here. All right, we're going to go back to the grooming table. There we go. And I just have Sam in the towel here. I'm just going to brush off all the hair that I got so that when I blow dry, it's not flying all over the place. All right. There's our wet boy. I'll use the towel to get off as much water as I can. And let the blow dryer do the rest. So I'm going to start the blow drying process now so it might get a little noisy.
He's not going to be completely dry at this stage, uh, but he gives me, gives me the bulk of the moisture is off him right now. So then I'm able to give him a nice clean clipping. So I'm going to be, like I said, using the three quarter inch blade at this time. I like to start at the back of the head and just work my way back from there. So with the, the fur being a little bit damp, it also helps the blades not to get too hot as well. only use this clipper blade if there's no matting. Sometimes you can, if this has slight matting, you might be able to get underneath it and maybe comb it out a little bit. But if they're too matted, you know, it's best just to go a blade down. And then after this stage, um, I give another blow dry and then you can finish with this one after you've gotten those mats out. Because after this second blow dry, so after I've done this um, trim of the body with this blade, I do give another kind of second blow dry. But instead of using this, I actually only use scissors. Because we like to keep it a little bit longer. But this just gives the, the bulk of it off so it grows in nice too. So it's not too long, but still nice and fluffy too. drying as well you probably noticed when I did the ears you always make sure you're not blowing into the ear canal you just kind of blow from the top downwards and you don't want to blow any air directly into the ear canal again because that can cause uh, ear infection or some problems in the ear
Feeling really good. Because the body is longer, I'll probably do the bum area with scissors. Just so it kind of matches the body a little bit better. The hair in the bum actually has lots of curls and swirls usually. A lot of cowlicks. So the hair grows in different directions, so when you're using clippers there, it always gives the illusion of a shorter cut, even if you're using the same length of blade on that area. And it's okay to go a little bit shorter in the bum anyway, but this way you're able to control the how long it is. Alright. I'm going to use a three and three quarter underneath the belly there. Just to clean up that area and we'll kind of use a few different lengths under here to make sure it's nice and clean. Because this is the area where we don't want stuff to be sticking to. So we we'll do that a little bit shorter. And then uh, right around where he pees, I'm going to actually use a number 10 because I want to make sure I don't grab anything. And you don't have to go right to the skin with it, but it's just a lot easier to uh, clean up that area without worrying about catching anything in the clippers. But it's all right to go nice and clean in that area. This area is also prone to matting as well. I'm going to go a little bit down the legs as well. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to go back and uh, scissor cut around the bum area. I'm just seeing a little spot here on his foot. I'm going to do that. It's hard to do that with the three quarter blade to get in there. And I'll be finishing with the scissors. Anyways, and I'll wait till he stays still. So there's stuff stuck around his bum real close. So I'm going to trim that shorter, and that kind of gives me an idea of you know where the stuff sticks. So I generally will trim that a little shorter. And I'll trim up here so that the hair doesn't grow into the bum as well. Got lots of curls in here. Just making sure you know what you're always cutting. Because sometimes here there can be some loose skin if the dog has been fixed. Sometimes the skin doesn't tighten right up to the body. You want to make sure that that is all fur in there because it can be right, very thick fur as well. So you may not realize there's actually skin in there as well. So just always recheck. All right, we'll comb out the tail again. And then I'm going to give him another blow dry here. I'll try to do a little bit of the blow dryer on the face so I can poof that out a little bit to see how it's laid. All right, I'm on my earmuffs. All right, and it's gonna get noisy again.
up with the scissors um, if I were to use the three quarter inch blade again it would actually take off quite a bit um, but we like to keep them a little bit longer so now I just kind of finish up with the scissors at anything that's kind of stands out as a little bit but he's got some curl in it so um, it kind of blends always nicely you're never going to get any dog perfect of course but I just kind of see if anything stands up a little bit higher Sometimes the clipper blade just can't get the angles. And this just gives it its finished look. So behind the neck, sometimes it can't get it. So, and of course, keeping the head a little bit longer, but round. And after that second blow dry, it kind of lays. And you can kind of shape it a little bit better. And I like to layer the eyes outwards so that we don't have to worry about it um, blocking his vision at all. shorter here because there's some staining so that way when they're cleaning it gives them a little less fur to stick to armpits there check this one this one's pretty good and always do the armpits a little bit shorter because again those are areas that are prone to get uh, matting in them So if you like this video, I'd appreciate it if you subscribe and you can see more videos like this. And if you have any comments or questions, please do so in this video. I'd be happy to answer them. And make any suggestions to make it better. Or anything specific you'd like to see. But, uh, Sam here is pretty much done. Just gonna get a little bit just how it sits. You can see how the back here sits a little bit higher. It's always uh, it's probably the same length, but because it's got more curl, this is real flat or straight hair, and right here it's got lots of curl in it. So kind of got the Maltese in there, and then the poodle a little bit of curl. So. Alright, so hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and I hope you're having a great day.